continuing recent conversations about, you know, exponents and how they work. We're going to talk about raising a quotient to a power. I'm going to put an example on here so you know what that means. But anyway, it's essentially where you have a uh, some sort of fraction, which is a dividing thing, which is a quotient. Um, that it's all that is being raised to a power. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. But once again, I'm going to talk about it in the context of the order of operations. So here's the old PEMDAS uh, pyramid. So I'm dealing with, uh, of course, parentheses first, exponents second, multiply, uh, divide, and then add, subtract. So once again, these sort of go in left, right. So it doesn't matter if it's subtraction or addition. It doesn't matter if it's division or multiply. Just the different levels have uh, one greater than the other, sort of a cast system, if you were. So we're going to deal with multiplying, or exponents, I'm sorry. And the weird thing about, or maybe not the weird thing, or potentially the interesting thing about this type of problem is you sort of want to do a little bit of, uh, it's almost like going from one point to the other. Uh, so I'm going to do an exponent in my problem here. So that means I raise 4 to the second power. Uh, 4 to the second power and keep it there. You want to go ahead and do your expo exponential work and all this stuff, which by the way, when you m multiply the, or you, sorry, treat a coefficient with an exponent, you want to multiply the uh, exponents themselves. So if I have 4x to the third power like I do in the problem I sampled, I'm going to raise a 4 to the second power, but then I want to multiply the x to the third times 2. Uh, just to make sure that I get the answer that I'm looking for. And then at that point you go back and do the dividing. So the dividing is sort of the thing that you do last. So, you know, just remember the relationship is when you raise something to an exponent you need to multiply the numbers. And then you go ahead and divide. So it's almost like it does this thing. Just coincidentally it happens to fall in that order. If I'd written this backwards it would look like it was going the other direction. But anyway, let's look at this one. So I'm raising 4x to the third over 2 to the second power. I'm treating the numerator and denominator differently, or like separately, not differently. They'll have the same basic idea. So I'm going to raise 4 to the second power, which is, of course, um, 16. Almost said 8 there. That would have been a problem. Uh, and it's because I was thinking ahead, if you do an exponent to the coefficient, or the number, uh, the exponent itself is the little brother, so it only gets to multiply. So I do 3 times 2. x to the sixth power. And then from there, I still want to do the bottom by the exponent as well, so it's almost like I'm doing this, and then down here I'm doing this. And 2 to the second power is, of course, 4. From here, I can do any kind of uh, division workup that I need to. There's no other variable term, so that x to the sixth is going to stay exactly where it is. But 16 divided by 4, the coefficients in this case aren't going to move around. They're going to are not going to stay the same, they're going to change. Because 16 divided by 4 is, of course, 4. So my final answer is 4x to the 6th power, which makes sense, I mean, really, if you think about it. Uh, I'm just taking half of this whole thing. Well, whatever. So, on we go to the next one. I'm taking half of this and then squaring it, sorry. It is in parentheses. So in this case, I'm doing 8 n to the 3rd power, that's to the 3rd. It's a little difficult to see on my camera from here, but maybe the post product will look better, I don't know. Uh, and raising all that to the 5th. Now I'm going to treat them a little bit separately for right now, so I'm going to do 8 to the 5th up here, and then down here I'm going to do n to the 3rd, and raise that to the 5th. Then I'm going to sort of bring them back together, reunion concert style. So from here, I need to do 8 to the 5th power, which is a pretty big number, uh, 32,768. It's gigantic. Um, and for now, I'm going to keep this in the denominator. It may not stay there. I need to raise, uh, and remember, when exponent is the big brother, little brother is multiply. So 3 times two, or three times 5 sorry, is n to the 15th power. And that's it. I mean, that's my final answer as far as that one is concerned. There's nothing I can do. n is a variable, and the constant term on top is not a variable term. So I'm done. In the next one, same type of thing. I'm going to do a little split work. The first thing I'm going to do, however, is put a 1 after the x, just so I remember, otherwise I'll forget. And I want to do a little, uh, it's almost like this one goes 3 to the 5th times x to the 1st to the 5th, and on the bottom it becomes 4 to the 5th times y to the 2nd power raised to the 5th power. That's a lot of stuff. 
Anyway, I'll do uh, 3 to the 5th power, because remember, coefficients sort of stay the same. Then I want to do a little multiply work, because it's the little brother. 5 times 1 is 5, so x to the 5th power here. And then um, 4 to the 5th power is 10, or 1,024, I was going to say 1024. It would have been the same thing, essentially. And then 2 times 5, of course, is y to the 10th. Now, I can see if there's any division that needs to be done. And 243 over uh, 1024 may reduce. So I'm going to check it really quickly. And it's good. I mean, that's as far as it goes. I was trying to think if there were any um, a, any common denom or any sort of common factors, but not really. Uh, and as far as the x to the fifth, y to the tenth is concerned, yeah, that's it. I mean, they they aren't like terms. One has an x and one has a y, so there's nothing you can do about them. So you just leave them where they are. So this is the answer. I don't, the equal sign wasn't even really necessary here. So that's when how that's how that one goes. Uh, the next set we're going to talk about. Well, what happens if there's a negative? exponent on the outside. And if you'd seen the one about raising a product to a pro, uh, to an exponent or to a power, raising a product to a power, that's what it's called, uh, well, all you do is really flip it over and then apply that to the third power thing uh, to the final or to the next step. So really all we're going to do is make it into raising it to the third power, but we're going to flip over that uh, inequality to make sure that that happens. So let's do it. 4 to the negative third really is 2x to the third over 4, or 4 over 2x to the third to the negative third, is really 2x to the third over 4 to the third power. And I really think I need to write as much as I've been writing, uh, so I'm just going to sort of work this one a little bit more uh, simply. So 2 to the third power is, of course, 8. And remember, the exponents get sort of the little brother, so 3 times 3 is 9. And then 4 to the third power is 64. This one actually does reduce, uh, does reduce because 8 goes into 64. So you get 1 over 8. And do you have to put the 1 there? No, I did it to make a point. But eventually it'll just become x to the 9th over 8. You don't move the x to the 9th unless it had some sort of negative exponent on it, and it doesn't here. But this will make it nice and clean as long as you go ahead and flip it. Now, uh, this whole negative x to the 4th over 5 to the 5th power raised to the negative 2 power. So let's go ahead and do the little flip part of it. This, by the way, would be negative 1. Any, um, if you have a negative in front of the whole, variable, uh, the whole fraction, apply it to the numerator. It just makes it easier. So I'm going from here, and I'm going to flip over, and it'll be 5 to the 5th power over negative, I think this was supposed to be 5x to the 5th power. Otherwise, this doesn't really, I was like, what was the point? I could have just done that. So there, to negative 1x to the 4th power. And now all that's raised to the 2nd power. So I do 5 to the 2nd power, which is 25. Little brother, 5 times 2. Negative 1 to the 4th power. Get you right back to... Uh, positive 1. So you could put a 1 here or not. I am raising, I'm doing this, which should give you 1. By the way, if you're calculating that an, that question, you need to make sure you type it in uh, in this format so you can get this, so you can get this. Otherwise, if you put negative 1 to the fourth, it'll tell you it's negative 1. It's because it's applying order of operations where the uh, in this case, exponents would win, so this negative is applied later. So make sure you put it in like this if that's the type of thing you're doing in a calculator. Uh, so anyway, I end up with 1 on the bottom, but I'm not going to put it. And then you just do 4 times 2, which is x to the 8th. So that's it, um, applying the sort of relationships that you learned when you did multiply, and then divide, and then the powers. So raising a quotient to a power is really not very complicated. It just, I would suggest that if you have a negative exponent, you flip it ahead of time, make it positive, and then do all the rest of your math. So that's it.